So cryptocurrency has been an iffy topic with most governments and agencies. Like back in December when there was a Congress hearing where Brian Brooks, the CEO of Bitfury, explained what crypto was to the Congress and how crypto can potentially be regulated like how stocks and securities are regulated in the trading space. But it seems that more and more eyes are onto crypto right now for regulation purposes because of the sheer size of the crypto market right now. And if we compare the market cap of crypto versus other traditional assets, you can see that crypto market cap is currently sitting at around $2 trillion, gold is sitting at about $11.4 trillion, and silver is at $1.2 trillion. And El Salvador was the first mover in September 2021, making Bitcoin a legal tender in their country. But the IMF have warned President Naib Bukli on the risk of cryptocurrencies that poses to the country and urged him to reverse his decision as it might cause instability and volatility to his country. Having Bitcoin as a legal tender for a country does hold its issues, like price changes every second, spikes and dips, which might be something that not many can stomach. And imagine this, if you have $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, it can suddenly become $1,500 or it might drop to $500 depending on the price of Bitcoin and this was what happened after El Salvador announced that Bitcoin will become a legal tender. The price of Bitcoin plummeted from $67,000 to $30,000 range and currently is sitting at around $40,000. Although El Salvador has plans to use geothermal energy from a volcano to mine cryptocurrency, see a volcano, drink a volcano, be a volcano and introduce Bitcoin bond that is marketed at a 6.5% coupon with a Bitcoin dividend of 50% of the gain in prices of the cryptocurrencies after 5 years. Half of the issuance of the bond will go towards the construction of Bitcoin City which will be dedicated to Bitcoin mining powered by the volcano's geothermal energy. And the remaining 500 million will be used to buy Bitcoin. And most recently, Malaysia's communication ministry wants crypto to be a legal tender. So Zahidi Zainal Abidin said in parliament on the 21st of March that he hopes that the government can allow this and they want to try to see how they can legalize this so that they can develop the youth participation in crypto and assist them. Which is roughly a 180 degrees turn from what happened last year in Malaysia where authorities were steamrolling Bitcoin mining rigs. So this is super extreme and at that point of time, it was a clampdown on these miners who were stealing electricity from the country to power these mining rigs. Zahidi also mentioned that Malaysian Finance Ministry would be responsible for regulating crypto like how institutions like central banks and the Securities Commission does. Although the Central Bank of Malaysia haven't laid out a formal stance or reply, but the central bank is looking to introduce a central bank digital currency and Malaysia is part of the project Dunbar where they are testing out the use of CBDCs alongside a few other countries. Although Zahidi wants to go full steam ahead with crypto, the Finance Minister of Malaysia, Tengku Dato Sri Zafru Tengku Abdul Aziz, is less excited about it because Bitcoin is not a good store of value or a medium of exchange due to its volatility. And earlier this month, President Joe Biden signed an executive order on cryptocurrencies. So this order will cover six main objectives, which is consumer and investor protection, financial stability, mitigation of illicit finance and national security risks, US leadership in a global financial system and economical competitiveness, financial inclusion and responsible innovation. This order also calls for continued research into the USD central bank digital currency as well. However, this executive order still seems to lack detail but it might cause some ripple effect into the crypto space due to the stepping in of regulations. And Singapore's Finance Minister Lawrence Wong also spoke about taxation of NFTs during a parliament session but as of date, we are still quite unsure how all this will play out and affect those who own NFTs and cryptocurrencies. So I personally feel that crypto should be treated as a security or as an investment kind of asset on its own and allow people to trade and interact with it. And having it as a legal tender opens a whole new box of problems and makes things even more complicated than it already is. So if crypto can be regulated like how stocks and securities are regulated, it can provide additional means for people who want to invest into these alternative assets that are outside the space of the traditional assets. Like in Singapore, the largest local bank DBS has a crypto facility that allows select customers to trade their crypto on their platform, hold their crypto with the bank, and much more. And this will be a much better way to increase the adoption of crypto and educate people about what cryptocurrencies are. And with better education available, 
This might reduce the amount of scams that the crypto space already have and it will help us navigate to understand better if Bitcoin is a store of value and what other use cases can Bitcoin be used in times of turmoil and how Bitcoin can coexist with our current financial systems. But until we have all the answers to these questions, governments might and will impose more rules and regulations which arise from the distrust and the criticism that Bitcoin currently has. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't, uh, do drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. It means the world to me. Um, subscribe, stay notified, and I'll see you in the next video.